Hi, David Harper of Bionic Turtle with a brief look at adjusted exposure for FRM candidates. This is from Mike along and the chapter internal credit risk models. Why do we care about adjusted exposure? Because it's a component in the calculation of expected loss. In regard to a credit or loan portfolio, we say the expected loss is equal to the product of the adjusted exposure, the loss given default, and the expected default frequency. And by the way, we oftentimes see slightly different terms here. Adjusted exposure could be called exposure at default. That's EAD. Loss given default. This is typically how we see it, but it could be expressed as one minus the recovery rate. And EDF is probably more commonly shown as probability of default or PD. But if we focus now on adjusted exposure, there's a really intuitive part and a more difficult part. The easier part is the outstandings. These are the bank's assets, loans that have already been extended to the borrowers. Since the borrowers have the cash, the entire amount of the outstandings is at risk to the bank. So all of the outstandings goes into adjusted exposure. Now the harder part, at least for us to parameterize, are the commitments. Commitments include, for example, lines or letters of credit. So in this case, the bank has made a promise to the borrower and said, you may draw down some part or all of this credit, this letter or line of credit, for example. And so not all of this is necessarily at risk because only the drawn portion will be extended to the borrower. So how do we treat this? Well, in Ong, we go into this formulation here. And if we say the light purple here represents the commitments, then we need the usage given default given by alpha. The usage given default is the fraction of the commitment that is likely to be drawn in the event of a default. So you can see here's the full commitment and this dark purple represents the portion of the commitment that we expect the borrower to draw on on default or as default is imminent. And so there will be an unused portion of the commitment. These are not assets that the borrower has taken advantage of. So these are not at risk. So basically this portion is at risk. This portion is not. And the usage given default is the hard part for us to parameterize. We say the banks, the value of the bank's asset, if this were a single loan, would be given here by V. The value of the asset would consist then of a riskless component. And that's really this portion up here. It's the undrawn portion of the commitment, or 1 minus usage given default times the commitment. This portion is not at risk to the bank. The risky portion or the risky portion of the value of the asset is the full amount of the outstanding plus the drawn portion of the commitment or the outstanding plus usage given default times the commitment. Remember, if this seems like a lot of trouble to go to, we're really just trying to parameterize this so we can use it in our credit portfolio calculations. So it's this upper portion, this risky portion of the asset, which is the adjusted exposure. Full outstandings plus usage given default multiplied by any of the unused commitment. So now I'll show you the example in Michael Long, just so this is really clear. And here the assumptions are the bank's commitment is 10 million and let's say we go forward in time and the borrowers already drawn half of that or five million. Now that drawn portion of the commitment becomes the outstanding. The borrowers already got that cash. That five million is now outstanding. That means the other five million is unused commitment. So it's still a promise by the bank to the obligor and the key idea here with the usage given default is that this is really a credit option. It's been 
granted by the bank to the obligor. Now, in Michael Long, he uses a credit rating table on the idea that there might be some correlation between the credit rating of the obligor and the usage given default. Recall the usage given default, meaning the percentage of this unused commitment that is likely to be drawn in the event of a default. And so here, if we just assume that the obligor has, for example, a triple B rating, and that corresponds to a 65% usage given default, then we get that value here. And I'll just note that you can see there's no pattern in this table, which is consistent with the idea that this usage given default is considered to be somewhat stochastic and hard to parameterize. But nonetheless, we've got a number, we've got our best guess that on default, this obligor will draw down 65% of the unused commitment and now we can calculate the adjusted exposure. That's going to equal the full amount of the outstanding, in this case 5 million, plus 65% of the unused commitment or the usage given default multiplied by the unused commitment because that's the credit optionality. We can't really say that the full 5 million is at risk. And so in this case, our adjusted exposure is 8,250,000. Again, all of the outstanding and 65% of the unused commitment. So I hope this was helpful. This is David Harper, the Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.